Hey guys, I'm Dr. Lindsay Butzer, a small animal veterinarian, and let's learn about the top five most common health issues in the boxer dog. And if you're not following my other socials already, such as Instagram and TikTok, please go check that out for other animal content. All right, hold on to your seats and let's get ready to learn. First off, I want to thank this video's sponsor, who is Pet Meds, and I'm going to leave a link in my description below so you guys can go check out their website and shop online for your pets. Number one, deafness in white boxers. So before you purchase your adorable, cute white boxer, just know that 20% of them may be deaf. This is due to the lack of pigment in the skin cells of the inner ear canal and consequently the loss of sensory hair cells. A white boxer can have both fond parents if they have white markings on the face, legs, and chest. The more white your boxer has, the higher the chance of them being deaf. You can test your white boxer puppy at a veterinary neurologist who has a bear or a brainstem auditory evoked response test when they are older than eight weeks old for accurate results. This test will let you know if they have hearing in both ears, one ear, or are completely deaf. Deaf puppies can still have a normal and happy life. However, they do require more training and some precautions around them since they can't hear. Number two is boxer cardiomyopathy or arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, ARVC, and that is a mouthful. Let's talk about it. Boxer cardiomyopathy is a genetic disease found in about 40% of the boxer population and happens to them around five to seven years old. Of course, it can happen earlier, so it's always good to have your boxer checked by your vet. This disease causes the heart muscle to be replaced with fat and scar tissue, which causes electrical instability inside the heart, resulting in irregular beats or arrhythmias. This is very hard to detect on a physical exam at the vet because these beats can become irregular at random times of the day and then be normal the rest of the day. The dangerous arrhythmia that comes with boxer cardiomyopathy is called VPCs, or ventricular premature complexes, which are early abnormal heartbeats. When multiple beats like this happen in a row, the boxer dog develops symptoms of weakness and collapse that the owner can clearly witness, and they can even have a sudden or deadly heart attack when this happens. Most boxers will have collapse episodes, and the owner will go to their vet and can do follow-up visits with a veterinary cardiologist to manage these patients. A really cool and common diagnostic tool that cardiologists use on boxers is called a Holter Monitor. This is a 24-hour ECG worn at home to evaluate the heart and rhythm during a normal day. Prognosis for boxers with ARVC can live a normal life with a veterinary cardiologist's help. NC State does have a DNA test that can check if your boxer carries the genes responsible for this disease, but your dog may not even get VPCs if they have it. Number three, degenerative myelopathy which is similar to Lou Gehrs disease or ALS in humans, which causes progressive hind end weakness all the way to paralysis in dogs due to degeneration of the myelin sheath surrounding neurons. This disease happens in the dogs around six to nine years old. And unfortunately, there is no treatment for it. Thankfully, there is a genetic test to see if your boxer is a carrier of DM. And if they are a carrier, they won't develop the disease but these dogs shouldn't be bred. Treatment for boxer dogs with DM includes pain medication, sling walks, and wheelchairs if they're starting to have paralysis in the hind end. Most of these dogs are humanely euthanized within one to three years of developing the disease. Number four is mast cell skin tumors and internal tumors in boxer dogs. To give you a simple explanation of what these tumors are is that they're made up of mast cells, which are reactive cells in our immune system that causes a release of something called histamine, which is a chemical that causes an allergic reaction response in the body. So when histamine is released, it causes heat and itchiness on the dog's skin or in humans, for example, if your arm is wrapped around with poison ivy or you 
touch poison ivy and you become red and inflamed and swollen, those are your mast cells releasing histamine, causing that allergic response. Mast cell tumors are found in the boxer dog more than any other breed that exists. These tumors are most commonly seen on the skin, where they'll look like lumps that are hard or they can be a little soft. A classic thing about the mast cell tumors is that they get bigger and smaller in size depending how angry they are because these tumors are made up of those reactive histamine chemicals that cause the skin to get inflamed and red. And if they're angry, they'll be a little bit bigger one day to the next. Mast cell tumors can be either benign or malignant. However, benign mast cell tumors can flare up and become malignant. So any boxer owner who notices a lump on their dog's skin should get it removed ASAP to prevent any issues. Your veterinarian will send the tumor out for analysis to see its grade, which ranges from one low potential to three a high potential to metastasize. You can expect a boxer dog to have a mast cell tumor around five to eight years old. But be on the lookout even when you get your puppy because any age boxer can get a mast cell tumor. Treatment involves surgical removal with good margins, followed by radiation or chemotherapy if needed. This mainly depends on the grade of the mast cell tumor and where it's located. In regards to location, prognosis is best for those on the limbs. It is poor for those found on the genitals, muzzle, mouth, and nail bed areas of the paws. It is very poor for those found in internal organs or in the bone marrow. In regards to the grade, for grades one to two that were fully removed, the success rate of no recurrence within three years is 90 to 95%. Last but not least guys, number five, hypothyroidism in boxer dogs. So a study at Michigan State found that boxer dogs are in the top five most common dog breeds to have hypothyroidism. So this is an autoimmune disease that causes low thyroid levels. It is a hormone imbalance disease in these boxer dogs. It causes them to be sluggish and have weight gain. So other common clinical signs that you're gonna see if your dog has this is blank alopecia, which is hair loss along both sides of their body and they will have weight gain. So owners will notice that these dogs will gain weight over a short period of time, come into the veterinarian, will do a blood test to check their thyroid levels, and if they have low thyroid levels, there are medications to help increase those levels and help the dogs feel better. So dogs with hypothyroidism can live a normal lifespan, and they normally get this disease around six to nine years old. I got them both up here to say goodbye and thank you for learning about the boxer dog breed. You guys learned so many health issues just now. You're probably way smarter and these guys want to jump off the table. I'm going to let them do that. But please remember to subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and I hope to see you guys back here for more veterinary videos. You got a good job. Good job.